everybody, welcome back to my channel, This Rickety Games. I'm Sydney, and today we are back with Control. So we are here in the final DLC of the original game for Control. This is the AWE DLC, all the letters, every time. And it starts with the Dark Place mission. Now, what you're about to see is me stumbling upon the Dark Place mission after completing a bunch of random um, like missions and side quests and stuff just before we started the previous DLC, The Foundation. And I was tired and I forgot that the DLC starts with the Dark Place mission. And I was looking at my missions and said, oh, what is this? And then I ran into the sectors elevator here behind me and it triggered the scene that you're about to see. And I got so curious and it got the better of me. So I started playing through it. I got through a tiny section of it and uh, not much further. I really didn't actually get to any of the missions. I found a lot of the paperwork and stuff um, So you're about to see that and then we'll continue from there But just to let you know that I started This for a second realized what I was doing <laughs> And I'm gonna continue it now. So that's why the footage is a little different in the beginning But you will see my reaction to learning a lot of the facts that we've already been talking about in the comment section um, but uh, enjoy Darkness engulfed the elevator. There was something there, reaching for her, trying to make her act. It was a distress call. Faden sensed a drowning man, a hunger in the dark. Investigation sector. Investigation sector, huh? We should check this out. Woo! That, that... That was the dark place. Ooh, yeah, I forgot about that entirely. Yeah, you guys said that this was a part of, like, after the game. Ooh. Ooh, is this a new thing in the elevator? Oh, it is. Oh, we're going. We're going, you guys. Ooh, this is dark and creepy. Why did this get horrible? I can't even fit through the elevator. <gasps> oh, well, at least the lights turn on. That's good. Director Hello? Mor Northmore. Ooh. Anyone here? Former Director Northmore is doing Guess his job. not. Well, we certainly found the dark place in the bureau. Quite literally. Seems a lot more crowded than the rest of the Bureau. Missing agents. Mr. Kirkland. Wasn't he the one that went to investigate the Bright Falls incident? Here are latest agents confirmed missing. Presumed dead from the containment breach yesterday. Agent Jonathan Connor, researcher Ezra Cruz, Caroline Dempsey, Lindsay Malcolm, Charles Murray, Derek Shaw. Letters of condolences will be delivered to you to sign prior to sending them to their families. You will be updated as soon as additional confirmations are made. As per your request, a network engineer checked how many cases were backed up digitally. Unfortunately, a large number of active investigations were not yet archived, and the only hard copies of reports exist behind the firebreak. They're lost, I'm afraid. The firebreak? That's a thing. Oh, Polaris is showing us something. Bureau Tractor AI82-KE Supplementary Materials. Note, miscommunication led to a coroner examining the body of William Burrow. Burrow, William, male, Caucasian. Case summary, a 33-year-old man found dead on his property per the police report. Remains obtained for the coroner's office also include blood, urine, bile, stomach contents, and bone fragments. Autopsy findings, blunt force injuries to the head, lacerations to the left ear and the cheek, uh, blunt force injuries and extremities, dislocation of the right knee, complete avulsion of the right upper extremity with associated fracture on the right proximal humerus, extensive trauma, abdominal region, complete avulsion of multiple organs, including stomach, heart, liver, pancreas, kidneys, and portions of the large and small intestine, all missing from the scene. 
In conclusion, it is my opinion that Mr. Burroughs' death is not the result of a mechanical accident claimed by authorities. The removal of organs is consistent with an animal attack. Ooh. I wonder... Hmm. No, I think it's too much. I was going to say the removal of organs reminds me of the removal of the heart that the cult of the tree did, but I don't think that's a thing yet. 2019. Yeah, it's not a thing yet. It's cool though. What? Oh, what's this? <gasps> oh, yes, that's right. Darkness engulfed the elevator. There was something there. A presence. Jesse Faden could hear it. A call. It was faint, reaching for her from a dark place. Faden was sensitive to visitations. She had them all the time. From her guiding star and the previous director. She was the perfect receiver. As if she'd been made for this. Faden paused to feel it. The force at play here. It was changing things around her, subtle. Trying to make her act. Faden didn't like that. Her guide felt it too. Polaris didn't flare up in defense as with the hiss. So it wasn't all bad. Not a hostile transmission. It was powerful, but it was coming from far away. And made weak because of the distance. It was a distress call. Faden sensed a drowning man. A man desperate to escape. She sensed something else too. A hunger in the dark. Not unlike the hostile resonance. Waiting. She knew that desperate acts can have grim consequences. It was this, more than the man's despair, that made her follow the call. The elevator lights winked back on. The darkness receded like a memory. There was a new button on the elevator control panel. Investigation sector. Faden pressed the button. The elevator doors slid shut with practice bravado. Whoa. Okay, there's a couple of interesting things, and I didn't comment on it when we saw the vision of it by the elevator. Um, one, I mean, it's Alan Wick, so holy shit. He's also wearing his original 2010 clothing, so not yet the suit that we see in Alan Wick 2, which I wonder how he changes in the dark place. Um, the interesting thing, though, here... So obviously she says he says that she sees a vision of a drowning man. Obviously could refer to... A variety of things but obviously Alan right who drowns in the lake um, and all the people that drown in Cauldron Lake right um, but Alan specifically because he dives in and it's about trying to rescue Alan right drowning could be a metaphor as well for like her brother who's comatose he's lost potentially in the darkness things like that but I definitely think it's Alan because um, of the the water reference um, how and when does Jesse enter the story from the writer's perspective? Like, Alan Wake is writing. And, like, so which book is this would be? So we know he writes three books to we, that we know of. Like, he was writing the one that he was experiencing in the original Alan Wake. Um... I'm forgetting the title of it right now, but the he he the follow up to all of his Alex Casey novels, this departure, that's what it was. Um, it was like the it would be you know his his way of like following that series because he closed the Al the Alex Casey series. Um, Alex Casey like was he was done with it. He wanted out of that series, and departure was gonna be. A departure from that series and it was going to start something new and departure was basically what became the events of Alan Wake the first game so is this writing with Jesse Faden as a character coming from departure or is it starting what we know to be return and initiation uh, from Alan Wake 2 so at the end of Ellen Wake 1 and its DLCs, we understand that he writes Return, but Return cannot be completed without having written Initiation, that Return was too easy, because he tried to just write himself out of the dark place, 
And by the story rules and logic that the dark place likes to follow, it said, nope, that's too easy. You have to write trials and do it. So the trials became initiation. Is Jesse Faden a character in the books the way that Saga is? It seems like it now because she's written into it. I'm tripping, you guys. I'm tripping. I'm trying not to talk too long, too. So I'm like, how many? I'm like, oh my god, my brain is like reeling with like, what? She's a character? Because like, FBC does show up in Alan Wake 2. Are they like an entity that's like in the book? What's real? <laughs> What's fiction? What's reality? I, I love it. This is cool. Okay. Of... 2019, to whom it may concern, it is with great anger and regret that I tender my resignation as head of investigations for the Federal Bureau of Control. I do this in protest of the rampant disregard for my departments. My staff cannot continue to work in these conditions. Previous requests and warnings have fallen on deaf ears, so I must now rely on my actions to speak louder than my words ever could. I blame this situation on our who has routinely ignored my request for assistance in reclaiming the parts of investigation sector lost to the loose inside. I will never forget the screams of brave agents begging for us to open that firebreak. I will carry that shame for the rest of my days. The has failed his agents. I shall never forgive him for that. Sincerely, William Kirkland. My guess is the director has failed his agents. Um, that, that I mean, who else... Could it be? I forgot to zoom. Um, my guess is it's the director who failed it. I blame the situation on our leaders, our the board, something like that. But something loose inside investigation sector and it's been lost. Okay, so we need to open up that. A fire break. It's on the sign. Mr. Dennis. So, yes, there's an increase in AWE cases, and yes, it would be a good idea to put together a special task force to examine exactly why that is. However, it seems that a tiny little detail has slipped through the cracks. We don't have the damn staff. If you expect us to detect, investigate, and process more AWE cases, you need to give us more people. It's simple math. Between the staff we lost and the Hartman thing... <gasps> Hartman? Dr. Hartman? Between the staff we lost in the Hartman thing and the ones who left the other departments after Kirkland quit, we're barely managing to keep up with the workload. Hell, just filing the paperwork for all that altered items that we left behind in the sector has been an ordeal. Another thing, and this is going to sound paradoxical, but we have an overcrowding situation. This lobby isn't meant to accommodate a whole sector's worth of staff. We put forward a motion to move investigations to a more suitable location months ago. It better not be sitting on your desk. Still, the people are getting restless, and as Kirkland's interim replacement, it's your job to handle it. Best, Agent Grayson. Ooh, investigation sector seems to be really having some issues. So, firebreak and this... Okay, firebreak is that way, and that's where the bad things is. Uh, the bad things are or is. Uh, and then the sector head office is over there, so that definitely seems like something we need to check out as well. more paperwork. Ugh, can I please? More paperwork over here. Darling investigation. Official findings report. Re Dr. Casper Darling. Internal slash confidential. Per authorization from Mr. Kirkland. Internal investigation D-084-5 was launched into ethical practices of Dr. Casper Darling. Head of research. Despite the accounts of anonymous regarding inhumane treatment of a currently housed in the Bureau, our official findings regarding this were inconclusive. Numerous obstacles arose during this investigation. The majority of sector personnel seemed to be wholly unaware of any such contained there. One confirmed the code name to be, but all files pertaining to that name were inaccessible, being classified under the highest clearance level. Investigators were similarly blocked from entering the research wing to interview its staff. The matter was further complicated by the lack of clarity on whether non-human paranatural entities warrant humane treatment. 
While this investigation cannot address any charges against Dr. Darling, we do recommend an investigation into research. Refer to file 9820136 for full report. So a couple of things we can maybe guess. Um, the inhumane treatment of an entity, my guess would be maybe Dylan or maybe the Hiss entity. The majority of research sector personnel, maybe something like that. So that's interesting, but I mean, it is not a surprise that they were investigating him for what he was up to because he became very secretive and paranoid at the end. Casey inquiry? What? <gasps> All the people, man. Mr. Dennis, a request came through recently from an FBI agent asking for all of our files on Bright Falls, specifically on the disappearance of author Alan Wake. Per the Interagency Information Exchange Agreement, I had some paper pushers gather up a folder of pre-approved files. Don't worry, all the inappropriate material is either missing or redacted. But I'm writing to let you know that we received this request from a special agent named Alex Casey. Sounds familiar, right? That's because Alex Casey is the name of a fictional detective in those hard-boiled crime books Alan Wake wrote. Pretty interesting that an FBI agent sharing a name with the most famous character Wake wrote is looking into a case dealing with a writer's fiction coming true. I think this is worth looking into. What's your opinion? Just give the word and I'll start surveillance on this guy, Special Investigator Gleason. Ooh, I think you guys really should check into that because that's something more than a coincidence. Little bit more than a kooinky dink. So he worked for the FBI. We also know through Zane's film that at least Alex Casey in that worked for the FBC. So maybe in another dimension or an alternate timeline, he's in the FBC. Oh, we're tripping now. So many things to read. Oh, but this is all all the Alan Wake stuff. Okay. To Chief Investigator Dennis. So it happened again, third time this year. Something certainly has it out for our could-be raccoons. The locals certainly complain about them enough. But why the hell would raccoons keep going after a monitoring station? Doesn't add up. Anyway, I've got a bureau tech going to the site next week to take a look. Oh, I had a feeling this. It, the next sentence confirms it. Next on the list of recurring problems and staff at the Lake House Research Station. How am I supposed to effectively keep an eye on Lake if they won't let me see any data? Hell, I don't even know what they're researching out there. We need to petition them again to share their info with investigation agents. It's only a matter of time before this hits again and I want to be prepared. Anyway, if anyone at HQ asks why the Bright Falls report is a little thin this month, tell them it's because we couldn't take any readings. In the meantime, I might investigate some raccoon traps. Sincerely, Agent Estevez. <gasps> Estevez! She's the one from Alan Wake 2. Okay. Okay, I initially thought something certainly has it out for our station. Um, and I thought they were talking about the Lake House station, but then they say next on the list is the Lake House station, so something else. So it must be the Bright Falls um, research station that they're talking about, the Cauldron Lake one. Um... How am I supposed to effectively keep an eye on Cauldron Lake if they won't let me see me any data? I think we know that's probably for certain what that is. Um, a matter of time before this, I don't know what that would be again. Hiss is not the word for it because that's not at Cauldron Lake. My guess would be Dark Presence, um, you know, something to that effect. Interesting. So we're getting the answers that we were kind of looking for in the first control. Or the the base game control. My goodness, the writing. Underhill. Ooh, okay. Official findings report. Read Dr. Rhea Underhill. So she's the one with the mold who was kind of a stuck-up asshat. I respect her for her stuck-upness and her kind of I'm gonna do what I want kind of attitude. On the other hand, she was an asshat. So, bit of a double-edged sword there. Dr. Rhea Underhill is a professor at the University of Woodrow in the United Kingdom, where she teaches biology with a focus on botany. Dr. Underhill once worked with the Bureau as a herobotanist stationed in the research sector of the oldest house. She served with no incidents or demerits and is praised by those who formerly worked with her, including Dr. Darling. Dr. Underhill has no 
known connections to paracriminal organizations or any record of breaching her NDAs since her leaving the Bureau, her civilian behavior has been ideal, with the exception of an ongoing personal relationship with Dr. Darling that appears to have begun during their time as co-workers in the research sector and has revisited intermittently ever since. Depending on the duration of her work in the oldest house, it may be required to have both parties sign a relationship clearance form. This investigation has found no compelling reason to deny Dr. Darling's request to offer Dr. Underhill an interim position with the aim of finding a solution to the mold threshold issue. Refer to seven, refer to file 7-8-5286 for full report. Okay, so one of you did mention in the comments that Dr. Underhill was Dr. Darling's girlfriend, and I read that comment and was like, huh, that's kind of weird phrasing. Maybe they were just referring to the way that he, like, gives her special treatment, because he does. We read a lot of papers in that underneath area where she was, that pit area, um, that of, uh, of other researchers basically being royally pissed that she was getting special treatment and funding and their departments were not. Um, we also know that Dr. Darling did ask her to come back after she quit, um, because she didn't basically like being told um, how to do her job, essentially. And she was like, fuck this, like, I'm out. And surprisingly, no grudges were held against her by Dr. Darling, which you kind of would expect from a guy like him. It makes sense now, though. They had a thing going on. And that commenter, thank you, because I looked at that, I looked at that and was like, huh, interesting. But it's real. Oh, it's the Dr. Darling. He likes the stuck up Miss Underhill. Dr. Underhill, we won't take her title away. So he likes being told what to do, is what I'm hearing. <laughs> we don't need that one. Um, interesting. Not surprising in the slightest, by the way. Kirkland, I am growing tired of your blatant attempts to lay your incompetence at my doorstep. I know you want this to be true, but you are head of investigations. This failure is your responsibility. What did you think would happen holding a dangerous specimen in investigations? The containment sector exists for a reason. They are better trained and better equipped for this type of work. In fact, they are admirably taken on certain AWE monitoring responsibilities that your staff are no longer capable of. This happens more and more now. And don't think your petty internal investigations have gone past my notice. You are a worm. Everything I've done has been for the benefit of the Bureau. Of the Bureau. The Prime Candidate Program only failed because of Darling. You are both failures, plotting against me. You are traitors, but the truth will emerge out of you. You are choosing to become my enemy, Kirkland. You don't want to be. Zachariah Trench, Director of Federal Bureau of Control. Former Director! Thank you. Um, this is interesting. So Kirkland was essentially doing, carrying out these investigations into the various staff on his own, it seems like. Uh, including one on Dr. Trench, or Dr. Trench, <laughs> uh, Director Trench, former Director Trench. Um, this language, though, makes me feel like this is the hiss trench coming through because you are a worm feels like something very hissy to come out of his mouth. Also, we know the longer things went on, the more the hiss took over Trench. Um, and he became much more angry and lashed out at a lot more people because of the hiss was in him. So I think that might be where that comes from. I mean, he also just seems like he doesn't like people challenging his authority anyway, so it could be that too, but likely hiss influenced or exacerbated by. Ah. And here it is, the, the thing he was extra pissed about. Official findings report, internal confidential re... Um, well, Director Trench. It's, 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 yeah. Per authorization from Mr. Kirkland was launched into the, of Director Zachariah Trench. A recent change in, witnessed in Director Trench, including aggressive when with other staff has been observed. However, this investigation is aimed at interpreting this issue rather than proving it. Notable between Director Trench and Dr. Darling has been witnessed by numerous bureau staff. Although declined to meet for an interview on the matter, witness accounts suggest their arguments center around dimensional research wing and the kept inside. However, no evidence exists to confirm Director Trench's as anything more than interpersonal disagreements. This investigation has concluded that Dr. Trench's behavior is not indicative of any 
and that his fitness to lead is not in question. Refer to file for full report. Ooh. So this is kind of what I was thinking with the last note, is that his aggressive behavior, which we know to be the hiss, because it did get him when he went in the projector excursion with Dr. Darling, it got him. And he just got, you know, like the ring bearer is just angrier and angrier the longer he sits with it. Um, until it essentially, um, well, he ended it with the gun. Um, but the, 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 we know that the hiss kind of made him do that. Um, but it, it just, it, it weighed him down and, 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 you know, ate him up inside and used all of his darkness to, to do so. Um, but a recent change in behavior, I feel like a lot of this we already know, uh, was launched into the behavior of Dr. Zachariah Trench. A recent change in, um, I, I would say behavior witnessed in Director Trench, including aggressive, like, attitude, and, you know, he's very hostile. Um, when provoked or spoken to with other staff has been observed, um, notable change between Director Trench and Dr. Darling has been witnessed, or notable arguments, either one because we know that they started to have differing opinions because they were on two sides of, a, of the opposite spectrums. Um, and then Dimensional Research Wing and the projector kept inside, that's what we know. Um, however, no evidence exists to confirm Dr. Trench's um, behavior or, you know, overall direction. We just know that he was not betraying the Bureau at the moment, right? So there's a lot of that. I feel like that one's pretty clear, even though I don't have the vocabulary at this moment. So that's the head of office. So, okay. All good to know. So what is this firebreak section over here? This is what Polaris wants us to hmm. see. It's not working. Ah, do we need the battery? Probably a loose power core somewhere. Seems so. I feel like kind of worked and kind of didn't. Is this power of the light? Yeah, so that power is the light. Where is the power to this guy? So it goes over there? Is there one on this side? Oh, yes there is. Move out of the way. I need in this door, thank you. <laughs> there we go. Who needs a door frame? Ooh, looks like there's more stuff we can read as well. Keystone inspection. Mr. Kirkland, we stopped at Keystone on our way to the target AWE like you asked. I'm sending my report directly to you to try and keep a lid on this Grumman Morales desertion issue. We didn't find any sign of them here. Given their records, it is possible they've switched teams like you suspected, but I don't think that's the case. An event definitely occurred here in Keystone, and I think Grumman and Morales got caught up in it. The entire population has vanished into thin air. Reminds me of the ordinary case, but that was just adults if I'm remembering the file correctly. This is different. I think our guys are casualties, not traitors. If it was an AWE, it seems to be over. We walked through the whole town and the only strange thing we noticed were markings on various buildings. Two overlapping circles with a dot in the shared space. Could be unrelated. I'll show you the pictures when I get back. In the meantime, you should send a team out here to cordon this place off maybe get the comms guys working on a cover story. Sincerely, Agent Keenum. I think that two circles with a dot we've seen on one of the doors in the motel. If we haven't seen it in the motel, then it was definitely in the Ocean View Hotel that we saw in Alan Wake 2, but I'm pretty sure it's in the motel. Interesting. Should I take this battery with me? Just in case. I'm glad I'm doing my duty as director and destroying the place as usual. Oh, okay. oh yeah. Now that gate should open. Nice, and we got some papers. In-depth investigations. 
Oh, there's a lot to pick up here. Bureau Tractor AI-82. Oh, yeah. So this we read about this a little bit. Um, it is not in Bureau Custody. There is no containment procedure known. A Frank Elk Tractor, olive green, dried blood on the grill when last seen. Item is capable of vocalized responses or growls and unmanned locomotion. Considered highly aggressive and dangerous. This reminds me of the... I, was it a tractor or probably like a bobcat thing that came to kill us in Alan Wake 1? <laughs> it's probably not that one, but it's kind of hilarious. The item first came to the Bureau's attention after the death of William Burrow, the boner of Burrow Farm outside of Trenton, Texas. Local authorities arrived on the scene after an employee found the mutilated body of Mr. Burrow beneath his tractor. Police arrived and were immediately driven away by the tractor. Panicked calls to federal authorities were intercepted by Bureau's communications staff. A team was dispatched. Upon arrival, the agents approached the item. It responded by growling like a bear. Three agents were injured when they tried to detain the item, which escaped. Aerial searches for the item are ongoing. Speaking to Mrs. Bureau only revealed that she had a domestic altercation with Mr. Bureau earlier the night of the incident. Whether these events are connected is currently unknown. Interesting. So we got a loose, angry, feral tractor. Ethics investigation. Official findings report. The prime candidate program, internal and confidential. Per authorization for Mr. Kirkland, internal investigations P142-9 was launched into the legality of the prime candidate program by the Federal Bureau of Control. Since all known subjects relevant to the investigation used executive privilege to decline interviews, very little first-hand information was gathered. However, anonymous sources and documentation declassified by Mr. Kirkland both paint an alarmingly clear picture of the systematic and were brought into the oldest house and placed under examination, testing them with the aim of appointing one as director upon maturity. This program has produced no successful cases and only resulted in the traumatic of paranaturally inclined. Not only is this in breach of the Ash Act, but it flies in the face of basic human. This investigation team unequivocally the prime candidate program and recommends that it be immediately. Refer to 9820136 for full report. Ooh. So this is interesting to know, and I think it confirms what we already knew. Um, the prime candidate program created by the Federal Bureau of Control, created by Doc Director Trench, um, and then Mr. Kirkland, both uh, anonymous sources and documentation declassified by Mr. Kirkland, both paint an alarmingly clear picture of systematic, I mean, torture is not the word, but abuse, um, trauma, uh, you know, force, um, as kids or candidates were brought into the oldest house and placed under forced examination is the thing I could think of, maybe, um, because we know this is what he did with Dylan, uh, possibly other candidates. He said that one through five failed, so that means that they brought in at least five prior candidates to Dylan and Jesse. We know that Jesse, they purposely left out of detaining her at the bureau. Um, but they kept her brother. This program has produced no successful cases and has only resulted in the traumatic harm of uh, paranaturally inclined subjects, people. Not only is this in a breach of the Ash Act, but it flies in the face of basic human decency, humanity, <laughs> rights. <laughs> um, so the investigation team is unequivocally, unequivocally condemns the can candidate program and recommends that it be terminated immediately is my guess the, for the, the fill in the blanks um so i mean they obviously find a lot of fault with it that it's not ethical in any way that it's harming the subjects it's doing more harm than good and it's taking perfectly fine people and damaging them um which we know to be true because of what happened to dylan right so dylan was you know a normal kid had a different abilities and they pushed him and forced him to his limits, abused him and mentally fucked him up. And all to the point where he was basically ready to give up on everything, which is why he left, let the hiss in. And that's pretty devastatingly sad. 
and they didn't seem to care one bit. It was in the name of research. Sadness. Official finding report, incident number A49. The purpose of internal investigation X39-7 is to examine the containment failure of specimen SI-1 that resulted in the deaths of agents. An inspection report of the containment equipment three days earlier showed no faults. Investigators suspect human error to be the cause, yet no department has provided any evidence to support this. Technicians were able to recover the researchers' notes on the specimen from the internal network on the of the specimen began displaying sharp increase in aggressive cross-referencing that date with various logs found only two events inconsistent with the sector's daily routine. The air filters were changed and an hour prior to the incident, a civilian named Alice <gasps> entered the sector regarding an unrelated investigation. See interviewed number 65 F124. Given the connection to the same AWE case, it is likely that Mrs. Wake's presence is relevant to the specimen's escape and to the investigation is ongoing. Refer to file 623-0721 for full report. Ooh. So I was originally thinking this might have been Dylan, but it has nothing to do with that. I think it has to do with Hartman, maybe, because they mentioned that Hartman, there was an incident with that. And if they're mentioning Alice Wake, Alice obviously belongs to that name, because we only know of one Alice. Um so interesting and they're trying to obviously mark out wake because wake is the is the key word there so alice wake and then mrs wake's present presence mm. Ooh, interesting Ooh, we're finding the things Ooh, we got a checkpoint here so that's good so we can reclaim this moment Woo! okay Hell yeah. Okay. Now that you're caught up to where I'm caught up, we can continue. So yes, I literally have seen absolutely nothing. As you can see, I got here and panicked and we realized I am diving into another DLC in the middle of the other DLC. And I didn't want to do that. I want to focus on one at a time. I'm so. no detective, but something definitely happened here. Whoops. So here we are. Let's do this. I'm very, very excited. Blessed organization. This group slash individual has operated outside the Bureau's notice for decades, perhaps longer, displaying a level of skill and caution rarely seen in paracriminal groups. A review of past cases has found various mentions of their activity over the years. In 2016, a production company called Blessed Pictures was connected to an altered item case, as well as the death of an agent from exposure to illicit paranatural materials. In 1994, a Los Angeles-based public speaker named Chester Bless was involved in the illegal use of an altered item. In 1988, a business called Blessed Repair and Service was suspected of involvement with an object of power case, perhaps even creating it. None of these businesses or individuals have ever been located. However, their connection to appearances of altered items and objects of power is too direct to be considered circumstantial. An arrest order has been issued for any persons believed to be involved with the blessed organization. Refer to file 739-09-22 for full report. Okay. So you guys have been talking to me about the blessed organization as we've been reading bits and pieces of them. So it came up before that um, somebody had sent in something to, um, what was it, America Overnight. And it actually like ash the creators of it so I, at least one of them i don't know what happened to the second one the host that we were hearing talking but we can assume that that happened i believe that is the 2016 thing um the death of an agent from exposure to illicit paranormal materials because it said in america overnight episode he said oh this is a package from somebody and it said have a blessed capital b day and then the other time we've heard a little bit about Chester Bless in other readings in Control, but um, this blessed organization has larger connections that, you know, even with Control because they're in Alan Wake and specifically Alan Wake 2. And you guys were letting me know that this is the same organization 
that our poor Barry has gotten himself involved into to feel like relaxed and de-stressed from his life. So, uh oh, literally, Barry is been indoctrinated into this cult, for for lack of a better word. So let's hope he's okay. Um, I don't think we deal too much with the blessed organization in this, but learning about them and learning that Barry has been involved with them, I think means that we'll, they'll probably come into play in a bigger way, maybe in future games, probably maybe Control 2. Just more tidbits there because it's so fascinating. I like caught the capital B blessed, but I did not remember, and I remember Chester Bless's name, but I did not I did not remember the thing with Barry, which is amazing and just further builds the world. Love to see it. So we are diving into control within Alan Wake, which is cool, or vice versa rather. Probably Alan Wake within control, because control is like the bigger world, and Alan Wake is like an AWE that was happening, you know what I mean? Anyways, let's enter the motel. Two, three. Do we know each other? I feel this feels familiar. I can't seem to. Uh, I've forgotten it. I'm sorry. I'm. My name is Alan Wake. friend Tom. Tom Zane. There's nothing to worry about. Tom. The poet. The diver. You, you look different. That was just a, a role. A character. The protagonist I played in my, my old film. I'm a filmmaker. An auteur like yourself. We're working on this together, remember? An artistic collaboration. You need a drink. Oh. What the hell? Mm. <coughs> Endless darkness. Nothing holds still. But we're very close now. You've been riding. You found a way to escape. It'll work this time. Riding? You found a way! No. I... I don't... Wait. There's something. It's my double. He's out there. I I've seen yeah, him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nothing to worry about. I'm dealing with it. It's fine, my friend. Let me handle him. You've met him? What the hell? Now, now, come on. You misunderstand me. Through the door? That was Alan Wake, the writer who went missing in that AWE case I read about. Holy shit. What's he doing here? Okay, couple of things. Amy and Thomas Zane was with him. The poet. No, wait. D -d he was a filmmaker. I, I always remember that wrong. What happened to Tom, the poet? Tom. Okay, so he's already a filmmaker at this point. I, for a second, I thought that was Mr. Scratch. Then he said Tom Zane. Both make sense. Um, but okay. Whoa. <laughs> so for one, we got a peek into the door. Which okay, holy shit. And then the other thing that we learned, I think, earlier, and forgive me for this moment because I'm trying to remember back to the dark place. So the question becomes, 
we know Alan is writing, and then in this, he implied that he was writing and that the FBC was a part of it. So the real question, I guess, is like the chicken or the egg scenario. And I think I was trying to talk about this before. It was like, is Alan Wake authoring all of this? So like, is the parent story to this Alan Wake and the FBC and the investigations and everything that's happening a part of him trying to get himself out? Or is FBC here and Alan Wake is a part of that and manipulating what he knows of it in order to get pieces in order to get himself out but it's like a piece does that make sense it means that like this could potentially be a part of the fiction right so like where basically where does the fiction begin and where does reality end um and vice versa okay so that's one thing and the other thing is is that we saw night springs which we already know to be a the whole thing with this but we saw dr darling in night springs so it confirms one that he's alive well alive <laughs> alive kind of defines a lot of random things at this point um he is at least existing he is not dead um and he is stuck in the astral plane that we know so i think that's confirmed it but maybe in night springs itself so that would be significant because we know that like Alan himself also got stuck in Night Springs for a second with American Nightmare. Now American Nightmare sits in this weird little spot unto itself that's like kind of connected to the main story and kind of not. What American Nightmare adds the most I think is context to the outside world because we hear a lot more through the radio about Barry and Alice and what they're up to. While it's kind of a weird loop in the dark place where he gets stuck in this episode of Night Springs. Um, the radio that we hear continues the world that we know. So like Alice um, goes into the filmmaking and the uh, photography exhibition. And um, we know that she like it plants seeds for her dark place exhibit. And it talks about Barry and what he does after the events of Alan Wake. And he becomes the manager to the old gods of Asgard. And um, so like that is like one of the things that like links, you know, the timeline in that we know of. But all of this is to say, Night Springs is coming back, we know, because that's going to be one of the DLCs to Alan Wake 2. And maybe Dr. Darling is going to be in that. So the Alan, maybe Alan gets to revisit Night Springs or the world of Night Springs and maybe find Dr. Darling in there because he seems to be stuck in Night Springs. <laughs> um, so that's, that's something. And then the last thing I wanted to mention was um, Thomas Zane. Obviously, we know his whole thing, but it's interesting to see that this is the beginning, beginning-ish of their collaboration because we know that that was the big part of Alan Wake too. Um, it is interesting that Alan and Thomas Zane both are wearing Alan's original outfit from 2010. I wonder what happens, like for them to change it because Alan gets his like John Wake makeover and then um, Thomas Zane goes to town with his makeover and um so that's the whole thing as well but wow there's so there's so many things i'm gonna try not to talk for like ever but holy shit so this is our door yeah i didn't think so <laughs> all our doors okay so it's like night Ooh, what's going on out here the dark place very quiet too. All right. Oh, oh, that's kind of fucked up. It kind of did its own three rings. <gasps> did they all open? Two of them opened. Holy shit. Uh oh. A TV. Yeah, turn that off. Wait, wait, wait. I know that noise. What the heck? Shut it. We like peace and quiet around this motel. For some reason. Okay. Did anything else change before I go messing with it? Nope. Okay, okay. Oh, wait. Hi. What is this? Ah, 
in three years always okay so what three things change this yeah <gasps> hello oh keys oh well shit we're just breaking the motel this time around okay so that was spooky dr emil hartman devoured by hungry darkness became the thing that had been hartman broke loose killed everyone it could lurking roaming waiting then something else came a resonance the thing that had been hartman went through another change oh god Ooh, so we get echoes of alan throughout this whole thing oh no but it's okay so you guys did tell me that this deals with like hartman and the fallout of like whatever happened there so you're telling me that hartman got taken over by the darkness and the darkness changed him into something and then he got extra fucked up by the hiss <laughs> i didn't like the guy but damn Oh, that's brutal. Oh, uh, he's probably gonna be the damn boss or something, isn't he? Oh, I don't know if I'm looking forward to a darkness hiss manifested non Hartman Hartman. Welcome back. Ooh. Ooh. No other bridges. Oh, what the fuck? Why? Oh, I want to go, but at the same time. Okay, this is what we're going to do, though. So. Wait, it's broken. Oh, I do have to go. Oh, 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 oh. I take it this is where we have to. But this is also broken. Damn astral spikes. I do see you. Alright, we're, we're going to the small bridge with the yellow landing pad, evidently. Um, okay, but I was gonna say... Is there blood? Oh, God. <laughs> Land safely. Um, you guys are telling me that there are still, like, kind of little things to find. Um, so I'll probably do those in the next episode. There's more stuff with the cats. There's more, um... You guys said there was like a side mission that like it's not really a side mission but it's like it's not on it's not collectively like on the um our missions page but it is something that you can do so like more little things to find and that there's more stuff in the panopticon i think um somebody was mentioning so i'll do more exploration in the next episode just so you guys know uh somebody got smushed oh and like smushed smushed like pancake smushed oh that's not great why would uh, be damp and abandoned why uh, wake want me to come here yes why indeed yeah, we don't need that we don't need inferior threes this... Why is there an explodey thing here? No walls? Okay. There's no picture. And this... Okay. Interesting. I love setting off all the detectives. What is Polaris trying to show me? Something over there? These bathrooms, man, you never know what you're gonna get. Apparently, <laughs> the astral plane one was really just something else. Could you imagine just working there and then walking into like nothingness? You're like, I just wanted to use the rest. Oh my god, why? What? The fuck? <laughs> oh, good. That doesn't look like a house shift. <laughs> Can't see Do I even want to know? I don't know. 
Claim the control point. Try to put it back. Nope. All right. Well, is anybody sheltering in place? <laughs> so they're not only duplicating, but floating and disappearing. <laughs> Oh god. Oh good. These look like the most uncomfy beds. It's oh. Look at the pillowcases have the FBC. I love that. Uh oh. Filing and processing. And that's our little save spot. Uh oh. I love friends! <laughs> you in the garage, buddy. Oops. Get taken out. Oh. <laughs> I took my a vending machine to myself. Oh, hello. Howdy. I love warm welcomes that are fiery with bullets. Bye. That was almost a Wilhelm scream. Oh. Of course, the hiss are already in here. Stabbed. Stabbed with whatever I just threw at him. Whatever these things. Little satellite, tripod, leg, murder, casual. Okay. Well, there's a lot of documents. Hello. My feet gossip at night, and now I have to wear shoes to bed. <laughs> Sincerely, me. Yes. Oh, wait. <gasps> That's right. It's the Dr. Same Emil Hartman was desperate. The Federal Bureau of Control had stolen his life's work. This was his last chance, his final experiment. What he'd been too scared to do before. Hartman dove into the lake, was taken, devoured by hungry darkness, became the thing that had been Hartman. Only an echo of him remained. Why? Fragmented impulses on autoplay, violent, bloodthirsty darkness in the driver's seat. Emerging from the lake, the thing was captured by the FBC. Brought in, contained, studied. The thing broke loose, killed everyone it could. The FBC fell back and sealed the sector. The thing was alone in the dark, lurking, roaming, waiting. Then something else came. Not darkness, but similar enough. A sound, a resonance. It shouldn't be a surprise. If there's one, why not another? The darkness inside the thing could have been immune, could have resisted, fought, could have been passed by, passed through with no effect. But it didn't and it wasn't. Maybe it had grown weaker over time, not aged. It was timeless, but weaker with no link to its source. A metamorphosis followed. The thing that had been Hartman went through another change. The fact that they call it the thing just tells me that something horrible happened. He like mutated. Um, uh, so, okay, that confirms what we already knew, but still horrendous nonetheless. The, the thing is so ominous. Uh, it's the title. I saw another thing over here. Things upon things upon things. Um, oh my God, that was... No movie things? What's in here? Is there a wall? Yes. Yay! <laughs> I was like, why can't I get in here? You will stop me from nothing. Um... I was gonna say something before the thing before Hartman in that whole thing. Hello. Might be worth getting. Oh, yeah, I have everything set to health. <laughs> there you go. 
little bit more evenly spread now. Dead plant. I forgot my train of thought before that, but I'm sure I'll remember it. Anyways, I'm going to go find the other piece of paper that I saw over here. Oh, man. Oh, why, why dive into the lake? I guess he... Oh. I guess Emil felt left out. <laughs> I mean, he said it was like a final act, but like he saw Thomas Zane and Barbara Jagger and um, they all got consumed by the lake. And then Alan and what happened there. So like, this is like two different writers that have been like consumed by darkness. I guess curiosity got the better of him or he was just done with life. Okay. Official arrest report, case number 74WA004. Offender name, Emil Hartman, or Hartman Emil. And then victims, Alan Wake, Tor Anderson, Odin Anderson, Rudolph Lane, Wendy DeSole, Thomas Emerson. Those are the people at his clinic. Um, officer names, Special Agent Remy Dennis. Charges, code four, kidnapping of altered individuals. Code eight, sanctions against altered organizations. Code 37, obstruction of bureau investigation. Code 74, breaching of the ASH Act. Ouch. Um, offender's property seized as evidence to be used in conjunction with ongoing AWE investigation. Offender's personal effects have been sent to research for analysis. After being cleared by bureau researchers, all victims have been released. Biannual surveillance orders were assigned to each except the Anderson brothers due to their senility and wake possibly deceased. Nope, just missing. Interesting. So they took everybody in and then we know later that Alice turned herself in at some point. Okay, is there anything in this room? I did walk through it already, which is making sure. service tunnel. Ew. This darkness is blocking the door. Oh so god, you brought it out. Now I have to deal with an interdimensional noise and sentient shadows. <laughs> oh no. This doesn't count as a powerful light source, eh? <gasps> light burns it away, huh? It does. So Oh, that's amazing. I just wanted to check. Yes, yes. Not that thing. Oh no, we're going to have to deal with darkness. With no flashlight built in. Okay, so what is... I'd better not have to worry about vents, I swear. Why is this so creepy? <gasps> Ew. So what the heck is in here? Oh, I see it, I see it. Go higher. And mold. Oh my god, everything. <sighs> Good thing we had that pill. We can eradicate this shit. <laughs> it was everywhere. Everywhere. Unbelievable. 
still not everything? Huh. Interesting. Maybe this is like another clear the mold side quest thing that ends up happening. Because I'm sure there will be side quests. I don't know if this is the right direction to go, but it's... Oh, we're in the we're in the pipes again. What the heck? Why? Is Auntie here? Can we? Oh. Baby, baby, baby. <laughs> what? Did I just take the roundabout right way to go? I was gonna check the other corridor, but it looks like it was blocked. Oh god. Oh, we're back to the darkness. I didn't mean that. I scared myself. So this No. Okay, that's the way to go. So this aha, okay, I, I see, I see. We have to reset it. I'll take my flashlight back. Flashlight, not flashlight, my work light. Better be fucking useful. Oh, it's dark. Oh, it's dark. Where's that thing? The sound made darker, the darkness made louder. Hartman was stretched like a worm through time. The third thing was a monster. Now we crashed out of darkness toward Faden. He did not. He did not do that. <laughs> oh, fuck. Stretched. Okay, and oh god. Get trained. The resonance carves its way through the thing that had been Hartman, vibrating, remolding. The sound changes the darkness, and the darkness changes the sound. They both changed what remained of Hartman. They all turned into something else. A third thing. The sound made darker. The darkness made louder. Hartman was stretched. Stretched as anyone when seen from out of time, like a worm through time. Almost an Ouroboros, a spiral, a maelstrom. The gravity well of a black hole, twisting inward, tightening, taking you deeper and deeper to the bottom, the heart, and through to the other side. The third thing said, when you hear this, you will know you're a new you. He said, we build you till nothing remains. He said, under the conceptual reality behind this reality, you must want these ways to drag you away. He said, baby, 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 yeah, orange peel. The third thing was a monster. He'd tear apart any ordinary person crossing his path. Now he crashed out of darkness toward Faden. There was nothing ordinary about Faden. Except where she's from. <laughs> oh. He keeps saying stretch. I'm just imagining like Spider Hartman. <laughs> I hope not. And I regret throwing my flashlight through the window now. Uh huh. Is there another way out here? Nope. Nope. Sadness. Can I get it back? Nope. Okay. <laughs> Sadness. These don't turn on, eh? Okay, darkness there. I should have kept it with me before I get fucking murdered. Oh, it's another control point room. Kirkland, so you put me on desk duty because I did the thing I was fucking hired to do. My job? Want to know what I call that? Bullshit. 
Asking us to interrogate these scum without using words like altered items or AWEs or paracriminal is the stupidest thing I've heard in my life, and I've heard some fucking stupid things. They already know the facts. Hell, they know just as much as us, if not more. And they get to sit there laughing at us while we dance around our words trying not to leak our classified terminology. They already know the fucking terminology. If you think pulling me off the case will stop me, think again. That piece of shit blew up those tracks. He killed those people. All to make a train turn altered? We have him dead to rights and you need to let me back in that interrogation cell so I can get him to flip on his buddies. These people are terrorists and deserve to be treated as such. This won't stop unless we stop them. You can go ahead and put me on suspension and see if that slows me down. Agent Hewitt. Uh oh. Yeah, that that would be very interesting to like try and um Oh, there's more. Um, to try to try and interrogate somebody without saying Agent what you're Fisher, doing. Day six inside the motel. Surveillance so methods are as follows: fiber optic cameras slid under the individual room doors, motion detectors in the lobby area, trip wire triggering a flash camera across the main entrance, even fingerprint powder on the front desk. Results are varying at best. But mostly just inconclusive and unusable. The footage is corrupted. Sometimes even the equipment is damaged. I don't know how exactly. I uh I think this place is making fun of me. That's the only explanation. I, I can hear them laughing and screaming behind the closed doors. I can hear the call bell going ding multiple times a day, but when I look, there's no one there. I know I'm supposed to stay out of sight, but I've seen the doors closing just before I can catch even a glimpse of anyone or anything. They're messing with me. Whoever they are, I think... Wait, shh. There's something. I gotta get this. Gotta get the cable out. Come on, you fiber optic fuck. Cooperate. Okay, there we go. Is that it? Oh boy! All right. Oh. Was faint, but I definitely heard movement coming from the hallway. I was seeing up some movement. I call one. <laughs> the recording better work this time, or I swear to God, I'll... What? Hello? Who's there? Oh shit! I'm with the FBC. Move away from the door. I have a. Where's my? They're still rolling. Is it done? Okay, I think it's done. <laughs> I was like, all right, last time it stopped. All the floating things are kind of hilarious though. Uh, all right, moving on. So there's a darkness door upstairs. Oh. NASA. Interagency cooperation decision, re NASA. Following the NASA slash FBC coordination agreement of 1972, the Bureau has provided NASA with numerous technological advancements based on our research, including the black rock lining now found in all spacefaring vessels. In return, all data gathered during space missions is made available for the Bureau researchers to analyze. Recently, certain individuals have raised the concern that this relationship does not adequately benefit the Bureau either intellectually or financially. A thorough examination of the costs accrued by both organizations has shown the expense of NASA's recent launch of the far outweighs any spending related to the processing and delivery of Black Rock. From its medium Earth orbit, the will provide the Bureau with unparalleled resource for remotely monitoring and photographing AWE sites, a resource that would be lost if the partnership ends. It is the opinion of this committee that maintaining a cooperative relationship with our colleagues at NASA is of vital importance. Refer to file 381-4812 for full report. Oh, so they launched what, a satellite? To basically like help keep an eye out for um like 
Well, so they launched a satellite basically to take pictures remotely. Interesting. Something more over there, Polaris. It's so fucking dark. And there's a thing upstairs as well. Oh. Can we get a permanent flashlight that floats above our head? It would be useful. We just kind of magic that to happen. Black Mar- Oh, I hear Ati. David Gleason, Special Investigator, Remy Dennis, Chief Investigator. A visual findings report, illegal altered item market. A black market hub specializing in the trade of occult talismans, relics, and other assorted ceremonial objects, as well as genuine altered and paranatural materials was raided in Czech Republic by a team of special investigators. Unsuccessful attempts by suspects to escape using altered items resulted in numerous casualties and prevented the Bureau from questioning all participants. The following interrogations revealed that not only is there a vast network of these retailers, but they seem to be gathering information on altered items and other paranormal materials from sources unknown to the Bureau. The Bureau's concern here is threefold. A. There is a growing underground market for paranormal materials, which implies a growing awareness of their existence among a niche group of the general public. B. These criminals do not seem to be aware of the item's paranormal powers, and their attempts to activate them could prove devastating if done in populated areas. C. The motivations of these collectors are largely unknown. Refer to file 512-0221 for full report. Yeah, we were hearing a little bit about that previously. Oh my god, it's Auntie's cart! Another fine have died standing up. <sighs> We've done them, them up. Okay. Huh. More plants. We can talk to plants. Alright. Let's go make some new friends. New day, same old bloody season. Get rid of it. They are full of mold shit. It's no good for you. Headache, nauseous, mold lag, depression. But how can you tell when you are not in? Because it's a sort of as I ever. Okay, so we cleared one of the rooms of mold. I was right that there was like a another one of those things. Okay, so talk to plants, eliminate darkness in three different locations, and eradicate mold in three different locations. We'll keep our eyes peeled. What the hell happened to my light? I dropped it over here somewhere. Is it stuck in the bathroom? Yes. I was like, it got caught on something and I end up dropping it. Uh, okay, so this is locked. That's so cool though. Okay, so there is like a lot more to explore. I mean, I figured as much. The other DLC had its own set of side quests, so I'm glad to know that we'll get to keep exploring with more purpose. Oh man, either or. <laughs> I, you know what I should have done? Is gone the other way, burned this door. Uh, I have to do it anyway, I suppose. Okay. My brain is not here, but it also happens to be very early, so that's probably why. Act like a dummy. Because you think like a dummy. Burn it! Get out of here. So is this... Not one of them. All right, so let's turn the lights on. Ooh. Uh oh. Okay. So. Uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> so we lit up the computers versus what? This one's gonna light up the lights. Probably the lights? 
figure it out. All right, drop this in here for now. Let's read. A train derailment resulting in 62 casualties and numerous injuries was suspected to have been the work of a paracriminal group known as... As a result of this event, the agents discovered that one of the cars had become altered with a persistent auditory event. It remains to be determined whether the AWE was spontaneous or the direct result of the sabotage. The response to it, um, the Bureau had been tracking said group at the time and the intel gathered suggested an event of this caliber was imminent in Bloomington. As a result, a response team on site was able to respond to the train accident site within minutes of its occurrence. They arrived to find emergency processes underway, but also left equipment behind by the suspected group. A suspicious onlooker managed to elude agents after they attempted to make contact. Further investigation of the accident site revealed a curiously undamaged train car that exhibited an altered state when entered. This individual car was secured and transported to the investigation sector for further studies. Uh oh. You guys said something about a train. Choo choo. So there's. Okay, there's another one on the floor. The shadow. The, oh, okay. So this. This is. AWE 35 is. Uh, Bright Falls, I believe. Um, okay. Examination of paranatural entities. The shadow. Paranatural entity A010, aka the shadow is an aggressive consisting of three known types. Type A, the localized manifestations of sentient, capable of occupying organic and inorganic material as well as exerting over its surroundings. I think that's just sentient darkness, sentient shadows, right? Type B, shaded individuals, human bodies by the shadow. These individuals become noticeably more aggressive but do seem to retain of their previous selves. Research is ongoing as to whether this condition is reversible. That's taken, right? Human bodies taken by the shadow. They do seem to retain like pieces of themselves, but not entirely. Because like we know that the taken like uh, basically like repeat lines and phrases that they used to say in their normal lives, not taken. Um, type C, shaded objects similar to type B, except inanimate objects are solely to be used as destructive tools. So objects that are taken and they float and try to kill you. Each type seems to work towards a shared goal, possibly targeting certain individuals, see AWE 35, which may imply a shared link to a intelligence. The threat this entity poses warrants immediate exploration of offensive slash defensive measures. The investigation sector is being outfitted with additional lighting sources, some internally powered to prepare for the eventuality of an Refer to file 6-34-1923 for full report. An event of a blackout. Okay, so this powers the button. And then we have this. My understanding of the darkness is fragmented, incomplete. This abyss, this void, it very much does not wish to be understood. If light symbolizes knowledge, then it stands to reason that darkness would equate to ignorance. By its very nature, it abhors comprehension. Of course, my own nature drives me to comprehend all. We are opposing forces, destined to collide. And given this conflict of natures, we know that the light of truth will burn away the darkness, both figuratively and literally. Any significant light source can be used as protection, even weaponry against this metaphysical gloom. And then there are the artists. I know for a fact that Tom, Wake, the Anderson brothers, and Lane all had some involvement with the darkness. The question is whether their uncanny ability to affect reality through their art beckons the darkness, or did their work perhaps even create it? With Wake now secure in my lodge, I expect I shall grow closer to learning the answers to these questions. Assuming he cooperates, which is proving quite the challenge. Well, perseverance is the foundation of knowledge. Speaking of, I must be off on my rounds. <laughs> yeah, you are a very patient man. 
because uh, that didn't work out too well for you. Should I flick this? Oh my goodness, the lights. And then... So we need another battery. Well, at least that turned the lights on. most pathetic fight okay um i'm away still miraculously and where am i going so i can't take the battery anymore which is a little sad but i don't know i mean i'm sure i'll find another one but the question is i guess what is this power i thought it would be the lights but i guess not so that's, I guess, a good thing. Already moving on. Oh, it's dark. It's very dark. Where's my flashlight? Where did I put it? I think I put it upstairs. Darkness, here we come. Uh, I don't feel right. Something in this darkness is draining me. Yeah, it's not good. So, like, literally draining me, though. Because, like, it was taking my energy away. Ruh row. Okay, we need some batteries in a bad way do we see any off the top of our head nope nope all right little guy you're with me not like these i'm 
so inhibited with like one arm doing this. Oh fuck. Shit. Oh fuck. Now what? Oh fuck. What is that? Oh my god, it is like Spider Hartman. On oh, elevator, time to go. Oh, it's so much worse. Fuck, fuck, fuck. fuck, he's right. Get out of here. So you don't like the light. I can use that. Oh my fucking god. He is like fucking... What's up, bitch? Does this do anything to him? It does. Like a bit. So it makes him go away. Okay, we need more... I need more... More batteries. Or is it the one battery that I have to like take out? Oh no, there's more. Where's my light? Well, shit, we're doing this the old fashioned way. Is that him? No, just looks like him. Where was the other one? No? <laughs> While we read... <laughs> Vending machine AI-81-GE, none known. Testing in the investigations consector is currently ongoing for containment. A description of the item is a vending machine. It's front covered in a faux wood panel. Coin operated, buttons for selecting food products. The item generates and stores a variety of material, both edible and otherwise, in its rows of internal trays. Initial testing suggests the item reacts to the mind of the individual in closest proximity and will produce whatever they subconsciously desire. I want this thing. Can I have it? Attempts to cause the item to create living have consistently failed. The item was discovered in a nursing home in Alberta after a resident named Muriel called a local news station about a magic vending machine. The news story reported that the nursing home staff was purposefully stocking the machine with distinctive food and objects as a way to raise residents' spirits. The bureau response team encouraged the story while confiscating the item. Oh, leave it. It was giving them stuff. There was something else I thought. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, well, let's get this after the damn battle. Is there... Hell yeah. Here I'm walking around. Aha, okay, I see it. Boom, baby. I see you, I see you, I see you. So fucked, man, so fucked. Like, what is? Oh, I mean, I know what it is, but what the Silent Hill shit is that? Get out of here. Leave me alone. Oh, and he's got the power of the fucking hiss, of course. This is the most disturbing shit ever. I'm gonna throw another one up there. Ugh. No fucking.
fucking thank you. Toss it over there. We're, we're gonna we're gonna do this in a big strategic circle or square rather. Bam! Boom, baby. And then we're gonna throw this over there somewhere. Oh yeah, get fucked. Get roasted. Oh my god, that's so fucked up. Man, what the hell? Who knew Hartman was gonna be? <laughs> okay. Official findings report, Dr. Emil Hartman. Dr. Emil Hartman is an academic psychotherapist that owned and operated a recovery center in Bright Falls, Washington. Focused on the treatment of artists struggling with creative blocks and other mental disorders, Publicly, Dr. Hartman's treatment center seemed unremarkable in its methods and purpose. Privately, however, Dr. Hartman was abusing his patients in order to utilize any latent, I'm going to guess, para-utilitarian abilities they may possess with the aim of shaping reality? Shaping to his own benefit, which earned him a Class II paracriminal designation. Note, for more on the link between artists and their ability to... Reality, through artistic mediums, see file, shape reality. Investigation has proven that Dr. Hartman's illegal endeavors were conducted alone. After being approached by the Bureau during the investigation, he displayed no remorse or intention to cease his actions. Dr. Hartman was taken into custody, evaluated, and released months later, having been determined a negligible threat. His medical license has been permanently revoked. That's why he went to the lake. Refer to file 7-12-8557 for full report. Well, I think we know why he went into the damn lake. Um, okay, the airborne rangers. So you guys were the ones that shot me to death almost. Field his entity, his corrupted ranger, airborne. This subgroup of his corrupted rangers has manifested the ability to levitate, similarly to his elevated agents. However, these airborne Hiss Rangers display no telekinetic abilities and simply continue to use mundane Bureau weaponry. This evolution, being so similar to the Elevated, possibly indicates that Hiss can share permutations through a type of network or perhaps osmosis. However, the fact that this development in Hiss Rangers has only been observed in the investigation sector may in indicate an environmental factor is responsible. They could be responding to an altered item or other paranatural element found only in that sector. Or perhaps this is a natural progression of the Hiss Ranger phenotype. Not enough time has passed to determine a conclusive trajectory of development for each of the Hiss manifestations, assuming that any such trajectory exists. Refer to file for full report. Interesting. Trying to figure out what the hell to do with the... Oh my goodness. So many things. Um, try... oh, goodbye. I'm in it. Eh. Um, okay. Ocean View Motel observation report. An excursion into the Ocean View Motel and Casino discovered a previously unseen door in the lobby hallway. This door featured a spiral shaped marking designation door. Similar to the other doors, it is locked and cannot be forced open. Alice Wake, a person of interest in Bright Falls AWE, refer to file AWE 35 for details. The former wife of missing author Alan Wake, a suspected para-utilitarian, and contacted agents Shaw and Dempsey of the investigation sector using a phone number given to her in 2010 in accordance with civilian outreach protocols. The call resulted in Mrs. Wake being brought to the oldest house for an in-person interview. For a full transcript, refer to file on 2017. The excursion into the motel occurred later that same day. Determining whether this was basic synchronicity event, if Alice Wake is responsible for its appearance, or if the door itself relates to AWE-35 is paramount. 
she should be returned to the oldest house, possibly even taken into the motel itself to confirm if any other changes occur. So they're trying to see if she caused the spiral door. So many Brian things. Brian Hennerman, 21 years old, resident of Southern Texas. I'm sorry, ma'am, but I really don't understand why I'm here. You know what you did, Mr. Hennerman. We know I that do. name, don't Tell we? me about Delivery Disaster. The movie? I don't... I mean... That's it. It wasn't very good. That's not what your review said, but we'll come back to that. Tell me where you got the movie from. Movie night. With a, you know, a K. Not an N. Not... Not night, like nighttime, but... Who contacted you? Who told you to review that film? No one. I just did it because it looked obscure. I didn't even like the movie. I shouldn't have given it such a high score, but reviewing obscure films makes me look smart. And I thought if I looked smart, I would get listeners. My podcast would take off and I could move out of my parents' basement. I may even go to college and get a film degree like I've always wanted to. I swear. I swear, I swear, I swear. <sighs> okay, the kid doesn't know shit. I'm ending the session. <laughs> I was gonna say we do know that name. It's from the the Swift um the movie projector thing. He was one of the he was the one. <laughs> Whoops. He's like my whole life has been fucked up. Oh my god, thank goodness we didn't have to deal with that with Hartman just yet. That would have been bad. We used a bit of the noggin. The, the small okay, bit that's this there. This room is really intimidating and all, but I know my rights. It's not a crime to try and get a book signed. Making unauthorized contact with a dangerous paranatural entity is indeed a bureau offense, Mr. Alan Langston, Wake, though, buddy. And can be prosecuted as such. Uh, okay. Well, I didn't know that. Listen, this is being blown way out of proportion. All that happened is I heard Dr. Hartman had been brought in and since I'm a huge Alan Wake fan, I thought it'd be cool to get a copy of The Creator's Dilemma signed. Ah. Uh, that's a book that Hartman wrote about. We know what it is. Okay. Uh, good. So yeah, I was just looking to fill out my Wake collection. I certainly didn't know Hartman had turned into some kind of shadow zombie. That's a completely inaccurate description. Whatever. Listen, I'm just a desk jockey. I sort papers, do data entry, that kind of stuff. Don't come down on me like this. I made one mistake. I mean, I see people break the rules all the time and no one is pulling them into dark rooms to yell at them. Yesterday, Dave Gleason and his crew were talking to that empty spacesuit and laughing their heads off. We're letting you off with a warning, Mr. Langston. But this is going on your record, so one more screw up and our next chat won't be so friendly. Oh. Great, that is just great to hear, guys. Thank you, thank you so much. Hey, is there any chance I could get my copy of The Creator's Dilemma back? Get out. Eh! That's so funny. Uh, as director, we'll make sure you get your... Well, we can't get the autograph now. He's kind of fucked up. But we'll make sure that you get Alan Wake signed, maybe? Would be... Oh, my goodness. Where am I? Might be better than the Hartman. Well, I'm sure there's a signed copy out there that we could eBay for you, buddy. We'll, we'll, we'll find you something. Okay, did I check in this room? I don't know, that not, not this. In here. So many things to re- Oh, screenplay. Hell yeah. Note, the screenplay was found after the Bureau acquired the Night Springs television series and all its past episode scripts. It appears to be written by Alan Wake as part of an application to become one of the show's writers. Night Springs spec script episode over the threshold darkly by Alan Wake. It is only human to wish to control the forces around us and even more so to possess them. But what happens when those forces are not ours to claim or even part of this world? What if they are the things you can discover in Night Springs? Interior secret lab at night. We are in a secret lab. The large sign on the wall reads the Federal Bureau of Night Springs. Scientist. I've told you several times, Doctor. It isn't ready. Director. It's ready when I say it's ready, Doctor. But the being beyond the portal, we have no control over it. Is it us and Darling? I love it. Um, a bit of a weak start, but alright. I joke. I jest. 
all the funnies. So there's lights in here, I suppose, if I will. Ooh, hello. Please and done. It was a three. Yeah, no, we don't want that garbage. Do I hear something? Arcade machines? Shoom. Shim? Shoom. Shoom. Whatever. Okay, I did a pretty good run around the room to see if there was anything more. Um, just to see if there was any more, like, items or anything that I left. I think I got everything in the room. You know, I really wish that Control had, like, the Resident Evil map system where, like, the room turned a certain color when you completed and all found all the things. I wish that. But, anyways. I think this is a good place to leave it here. So, we are, we got our first, like, taste of Hartman, which is gonna haunt me for the rest of my days um and we are diving really hard headfirst into like all of the bits and pieces that were left kind of unresolved after alan disappeared um i'm very much interested in learning the fact that like alice got you know she will we already knew that she came to the fbc but that she has like, some effect on the motel doors or the doors in general um Maybe her proximity to Wake, like, rubbed off on her. Like, she's not a para-utilitarian as far as we know, but she... Well, I don't know. Maybe that's not the case, though, because she was able to use her art to manipulate stuff in the dark place. Like, that's how she was able to give the light bullet to Saga and um, the clicker. So maybe she is a para-utilitarian or has learned how to be one? I don't know. Um, it doesn't seem like you can just, like, become one out of the blue. It does seem like you need to know something, but she was able to manipulate stuff. Like, so that's interesting. I mean, we're getting, obviously, just so much more information. We're getting, you know, the blessed thing is really coming into view. Night Springs is really coming into view. Um, all of it is really kind of starting to connect, and we're starting to see kind of bits and pieces about what was happening in the real world, at least, that we know of. Um, if you would consider the FBC the real world, um, while Alan Wake was gone. So, like, after all of these years, you know, he's been missing in the dark place. We now know what's been happening in that span of time for Alan. It's now time to find out essentially what was happening in that time outside of it, um, outside of the dark place uh, in reality, so to speak, even though it's constantly manipulated by everything. Art. I will excitedly see you guys in the next episode. Keep your flashlights handy. The darkness is back and now it's being manipulated by the Hiss residents. So extra bad, but, uh, we will persevere. We are Director Jesse, and we're gonna kick ass and take names like we have been. Um, sorry for being a little bit sleepy in this episode, but I hope you guys enjoyed it nonetheless, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Goodbye! Bye.